Hello, everyone. Welcome back to this series. We are now jumping into Looker Studio. So we've gone through our form. We've hit on Google Sheet. We made that one adjustment in our Google Sheet. And I'll jump over them real quick. Um, I'd recommended that we condense down the student side into a uh, more usable uh, piece of data, which allowed us to take the freshman, sophomore, junior, and senior and just run it as one solid brick. We'll still have the information here from the grades to pull that in. So now we're going to go into Looker Studio. So I'm just going to type in Looker Studio and go right into there. And now here I'm at Looker Studio's landing pad. Very first thing I want to jump into, if I have something already built, it's right underneath me. But what I'm going to do is start a blank report. Now, what this is going to do is give me a bunch of different options. The only one you really need to worry about for what we're going to be doing is the Google Sheets. We're going to pull all our data in from there. So it's going to populate most recent ones I've had access to. You can search, you can open up a previous one to see if you can get it to populate a little faster. But I have it right here as my behavior tracker response. And now it's going to ask me what I want to pull from. So I'm going to look back at this. So I have form response one, I have list, and I have freshman rewards. So looking at here, it's pulling each of those in. So I'm going to do form response once. And you can tell it a specific range if you didn't, didn't want to have to sort out some of the data pieces. Like if you had a bunch of different formulas that you're working off of, you might say, I don't need like the first five uh, columns. You can narrow that down. For me, what we're doing, what I'm asking for, I'm going to just go ahead and take it all. And I'm going to add the report. All right, so looking at this, this is now going to build a table. And I need to think about what kind of pieces of data I might want to start off with. We're going to do several different sheets. We're going to have several different options on here. So the very first thing is it's pulling email address. I'm the only one who submitted in here. So I've got 29 responses of this person. I might say I just want to know the grade instead. So I'm going to get rid of email. And now I've got grade. And I've got the record count for each grade that has been put into the system. So that might be great for what you're doing. That might be where we're at. And in fact, we're going to look at a tool later on that just does this. It's going to act as a scorecard for this. But what I want to do is actually pull in a bunch of different pieces. So I am going to not worry so much about the email address. I want the teacher. I want to know who's putting it in. I want to know the behavior that they're marking. I want to know the, uh, we'll go ahead and do the description of the behavior. We're going to do, I don't need junior, senior, all that. I want grade. I probably want location before I even see the grade. And I don't really need the date, but I do want the time. I think I have those actually together. So that might be an issue for us that we might need to split that up back in the data, but we can look at that later. So I have this as just a running score, running tally of what's in here. And some of these have twos on them because I actually just copy and pasted some of the data to have repeat. But I don't really need this record count. So this metric right here that's actually saying record count, I'm going to exit out. And I just remove that. So now I just have the data. So this is pretty much just like our spreadsheet, just narrowed it down to what I wanted. Now I've got this column count to the left. I don't need that either. So I'm going to go over here to style and where it says row number. So I want to show you where I was at. In Again, just in case you go off click. So if I'm not clicked on anything, I lose all of this tab option right here. But if I actually click an element in our report here, I have setup and I have style. So if I go over to style, I then can change it to say no row number. There we go. I can turn off pageation, which will get rid of that piece there. Uh, it's really up to you if you really want that. So while I'm in here, I might as well play around with some styles on here. So you can actually put in different um, coloration. So I just changed the lines to blue there. Let's say I want it to alternate, maybe a greenish color to separate the data out. I want my header to be something other than that gray, maybe a darker blue. 
here's where you can really start tying in your like school colors and make it more visually appealing in there and set kind of a standard to carry through throughout your document. Uh, I do like doing this though. Uh, in my style, I'm going to go down to the bottom. I'm going to add in a border color. Let's go ahead and do this like purple. Um, I want to give it a little bit of a rounding. It just makes it look a little cleaner. And I'm going to add a border shadow. And it's you'll see this border shadow as it pops in. It's very slight. I, I literally just pointed. Uh, it adds it in just a little bit and it just makes it look like it's lifted up a little bit. I think it just makes it look really nice. You can increase the size of your border also. And sometimes that can make it pop a little bit more. So uh, this line link right here might put it at like three and it's going to really cause it to stand out. So here's our first bit of data. And I didn't really have to do much. It, all this was pretty much populating in. I just then had to say, you know, what do I really want to look at? And in the dimensions is where I added in. Here we say there. So what's neat about this is I can pull this down just a little bit. And this is just an ongoing list of what information I have. And I'm not going to get a lot out of having this, but this is just currently where we're at on this listing of things. Now, I can insert and put in different pieces in here. So I'm going to actually do a drop down list. And it's going to predict what I might want. And now you're looking at this, and now I have a drop down list of my teachers. And so now I can filter out everybody. I might say Miss Smith only. And now all I see is Miss Smith's data. Maybe I want Miss Smith and Miss Brown together. And now I have Miss Smith and Miss Brown. I can sit here and reset this back out. And we're going to include everybody this time. And so I have that. And once again, I can come over here to style. I can say I want to make some uh, variation changes to this and change it to different things. Um, get rid of this search option on there. I can make the header box like an orange color. Uh, Checkbox itself, maybe blue. And so now when I get into looking at this, you see it's blue there, orange there. Uh, there should be a way I can actually change yep, the box itself. Maybe I want that to be green. Maybe I want it to have another border. You can just play around with this more and more and just make it sweet. Like I said, once you have this, though, really for aesthetics, try to stay with a constant theme throughout things, especially on each page. But now I have that. Now, here's what I like to do. I have the teacher. One. I'm going to right click this and I'll say duplicate. Now I've got two teacher tabs here, but I don't, they don't need to be fighting each other. So I don't really want this to be teacher. Maybe I want this to be location and I'm going to change it out. And now I have a drop down list of the location and duplicate again. And now I have a drop down list of, let's do grade. Now I've got three pieces of data that I can sort through. So I want to know only Mr. Allen's what is going on with him and the cafeteria and specifically for seniors. Now you'll notice my drop down actually reduced down. I didn't see all the grades there because once I applied this filter, it affects these other filters and it narrows it down. So you can look at specific cases. We could have this be student. And it actually just sorts down the student. And that's a very handy one to have uh, if I'm wanting to have a report about a student. So maybe I don't have all these tabs. I'm just going to delete them for the time being. And this is where, to me, this is one of the more important ones you could have. So I have a meeting about a student coming up and I need to provide um, a report on that student. So I'm going to click Mr. Jaden Hill here. And now, Here's every behavior incidents I've had for him for the entire year. Now, if I had like quarters in here, nine weeks, semesters, whatever you're doing, um, 
you could have it filter down to see, all right, this is a report about first nine weeks, first quarter, first semester, whatever. And this is what happened. Or here's the entire year. So this tool is very handy. And so once I apply the filter, it's affecting my chart. And so that's all we're going to get into for this segment of this is just this piece. So all I've done is I had my starting chart that I tweaked and just put in the data that I wanted. And then I inserted a drop down list. And once again, I just tweaked and modify that. And that's going to affect each one of those. But look, you can have multiple pieces in here and just keep building and have more filterable tools. I have a reset option. I can click here. Other thing you can get into is I can actually click different elements and it's going to like bring that to the attention. What's neat is when I have multiple charts, whatever I click here is going to affect my other charts. And I'm going to show that off in a later part of the series. So this is just getting you started on building this. Uh, we'll go into building a more focused piece and then we'll look at different options we have to build different reports. Thank you again for your time and do continue to check out the series because I do think we have a lot to go through. Um, as we're hitting on this, once again, remember this is adaptable for what you're doing. We can make this look for minors. We can do majors. We can do positive things. We can add in a bunch of different elements. And as we continue the series, I'm going to try to add more features to this that might fit with what you might be interested in. Take what you want, leave what you don't. That'd be great. So thank you again, guys, for your time. Hey, thank you for watching this video. Please click the like button and subscribe so you can stay up to date on any future videos.